So I'm here with Simon Rowling, who was DOP on Legacy of Lies, which is currently on Netflix. Police are investigating the sudden illness of a Russian opposition activist named Sergei Skuratov. We consider this an act of war. The Russians' position in this case is becoming increasingly bizarre. You know what the next step is? They're gonna start blaming the Americans. This is a major incident. Ah! It was attempted murder by administration of a nerve agent. We're here because of your little tete a tete with that Cuba boy. Ah! Need you to pack your stuff, Liz. Why is it always. I haven't got time to argue with you. Just pack your stuff. Martin Baxter, ex spy with a troubled soul. I want the files and the report. Dead or alive, I don't care. The Russians have got Lisa and they're gonna kill her. Trying to get the case to them by 10 p.m. tonight, she's dead. Do you know what we're up against, right? I want those files published. <laughs> When you quit MI6, we had an agreement. You don't mess with our business, we don't mess with yours. You're a dead man walking. Throw me the back! How did you get your start in the film industry? Um, it's kind of a long drawn out uh, explanation, but um, I guess my first opportunity to do a feature film was a line producer recommended me. Um, and then off the back of that, I when you've done a feature, it's obviously easier to get other features. Um, it's a bit like any, any job, really. Um, but I originally, I originally did a degree in model making at uni and then moved into prop making and special effects. Uh, and then on the side, I was starting to run and build a production company. So I was sort of producing on the side as well as doing special effects. And then eventually I stopped both. Um, and as I was producing, I was also filming and I loved the filming side. So... I stopped doing special effects and then I did produ just producing and filming for a year and then um, had enough of a reel to kind of go out there and be a cinematographer. Um, and then that, and that was just kind of doing, you know, corporates, fashion, um, if a few music videos, just bits and bobs really. And then you just, you go from there. So would you say your background in doing special effects helped you as a cinematographer when it comes to shooting? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it helps me understand what you need if, yeah, it, you know, and, and also that it can really add a lot to the, to the scene, you know, like haze, smoke, fire, rain, all those things, they really do add, you know, they can add a lot, especially if you're outside. It's, it's, it's interesting to have more layers, um, textured layers. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's, I think working in, in production as well and, and knowing budgets and quotes and how to run a shoot. Every, if you can do, be in other people's shoes, that can really help. So if, if you're doing a degree, I would say like, definitely try different roles. So then when you do decide what you eventually wanna do, you understand what everyone else is having to deal with. <laughs> okay, so now as you're working as a cinematographer, how do you go about getting the work when you get work come in? Um, it's usually by mouth. Uh, word by mouth and, and recommendation or you know these days I sometimes see jobs on Facebook and various groups um, I got legacy of lies through Facebook randomly they had a deadline to start filming because of a, um, fund, a funding thing they had and um, and so they're really desperate just to, to, to they, they were looking originally in Ukraine where it was filmed and then they were going to Poland, where one of the producers was from. 
and then because of the tax break they were looking in England um, and and I was one of a few who kind of got the interview and yeah eventually got the job so it can be anywhere really and it's usually you don't really get a heads up you don't get a an advanced call saying you might get a job soon so it's all kind of on tenterhooks and waiting around <laughs> until those jobs come along. So yeah, so after you get a job, I just wanted to talk about the workflow that you go through when you're, you know, planning a shoot. How do you pick, you know, how you're going to light a scene and what you're going to shoot it on? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, like obviously, like, like I'll, I'll do like full full breakdowns of scripts. Um, I'll do spreadsheets, kind of saying what every scene is about, and then. I'll have different columns saying, you know, what lighting I might use and what lenses potentially or camera moves we might want to use. And then obviously you can just, you then go out and discuss that on the recce's or in the boardroom or whatever with the director and production designer and everyone else. And, you know, in all the prep time, you get a chance to go through the scenes and talk about how you want to approach it and how you might want to film it. And even, you know, potentially get shot lists done as well if you have time and also if you um if you can you know some sometimes directors don't want to do shot lists they just want to storyboard sometimes they just want to do it on the day i mean most of the time i like to have a for, for like an action scene or something very complicated you want to have a shot list um but if it's just dialogue you know you usually don't need one um, unless it's very specific um so yeah all those kind of aspects i'll just try and you know, thoroughly plan and prep in, in in breakdowns and stuff like that. Um, but I don't usually end up looking at them on the day because I've written it down and so I've learned it in my back of my head. Um, plus it helps you learn the script a bit better because I think if you read a script, it kind of, it's like reading a book. You, you, if you say, oh, what happens on page 27? You're like, oh, I don't know. Whereas if you have it broken down, then you can always refer to that um, at any moment. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's quite handy to have on set as well. Yeah, so looking at like the sh shots you've picked in your show, it looks like you have a very distinctive look to a lot of your work with a very nitty gritty feel to how scenes are lit and how people look in them. There seems to be a lot of, of hazy shots and yeah, very a very different colour palette to what like you'd see normally. Right, yeah, um, I think... To be honest, though, like I, I know what you're saying, um, but I think that, that it's just story driven, really. Like, you know, I did a, a Greek tragedy style short film and he wanted it looking like Apocalypse Now, you know, and there are a lot of silhouettes and fire. And, and I'm like, OK, so I'm just going to use that as a reference and, you know, make it my own. And the same with Legacy of Lies, he wanted it. I kind of, I guess I got the job because they liked a Chinese film I did. It had lots of color in it. And he said, well, we want lots of color, but we want to reference things like John Wick and Skyfall. And so I kind of looked at those films and what they bring to the table and their cinematography. Um, and I, I didn't, I didn't, you don't copy them, but you kind of draw influence from them and then do your own thing. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just going from what the scripts are really. I'm not, I'm not going to, make it all white walls and washy and no color and no shadow if if it's a, a you know a spy thriller um and the guy and the director wants it very contrasty you know i'm not going to go against what he wants so i think i don't think it's necessarily my style to be honest i think i'm my style is just what the director wants and that's why i like that's why i like doing narrative stuff i think over music videos where the Usually there's not as much, there's not much money, you know, similar to a short film, but at least on a short film, you're getting to tell a story. Whereas on the music video, there's, you're just filming something and trying to make it look pretty. Whereas um, I've always loved film. So you, you, you're, you're, you've got a purpose for your cinematography rather than, it almost makes it easier, like I think doing narrative because it gives you that purpose rather than kind of going, oh, what's like in at the moment? What's the best looking kind of coolest thing we can do? You know, I mean, kind of anyone can do that. I think I'd rather just follow the, the story and help drive that. But I'm, I, I personally do prefer that style, though. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I was watching like Ted Lasso last night and it's 
it, it, you, you wouldn't do that style for that, you know, it's a, it's a comedy kind of, you know, thing set in the football changing room. So you're not really going to go with high contrast um, sort of lighting. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I like colour and I like contrast, but, um, and, and more and more TV shows are, are starting to do that. Both what I'm trying to do with my cinematography is, is be bold and, and, and brash and, um, and stand out a little bit, maybe, I don't know. Um, and just kind of not play it, not play it safe, but just, I don't know, just keep, make, make, make cinematography interesting. Um, I know, I know you want to, you want to you know, help the story um, and the film and, and the characters with your lighting and, and camera work. But at the same time, I want to kind of, you know, make a bit of a statement with the cinematography. Whereas I think if you, if everything is just evenly flatly lit and that kind of thing, it's not, it's not, the, it's not going to be fun for me, I think. Mm. Um, and that is, it's just taking like little things from the programs I'm watching, you know, just like oh look i can see that they're using a top light and a key on the side you know all the time like marvel films it's always very kind of frontal but high up you know so they're the evenly lit kind of actors because they don't want to make the stars look you know too shadowy on the faces so it's just kind of what, what looking at things and watching them and then if they're really good i'll um i'll try and read up on it and then finally what's your advice to my like fellow filmmakers looking to get their start in the film industry? Um, I guess, yeah, just have your eyes and ears open and, and, and just get on set, really. Like, just do... I mean, I, I, I have to say, like, there's some people who are, like, super lucky, get breaks really young, you know, and I'm, I haven't been one of them. Um, <laughs> I, I, I am just... I guess I'm one of those people who just... I'll just keep filming, keep working, and eventually I'll get there. Um, I mean, I've got like, I just looked yesterday, I've got like 38 credits on IMDb, which is like the same as like some really, really big Hollywood, you know, DPs, they've got the same amount, but mine, mine are like very bad, <laughs> like music videos or shorts or whatever. And it's only like the last few, which are actually decent, you know? So I got, I guess I've kind of, my learning ground has been just shoot it, get out there and just shoot it. And then you'll learn from your mistakes and you'll learn what you like. And cause I didn't, I didn't do cinematography at uni. So I, like I said, I've had like two careers before this and since like 12 years since they even uni. So um, the, my learning ground has been just doing lots of shorts and, and like commercials and little bits here and there. So yeah, I guess just get out there, shoot it. And, and try and I've never learned from another cinematographer. So I think I would say get out there and be a trainee so, or camera assistant so you can learn the, the technology of the cameras or even get out there and be a spark and, um, and then a best boy or whatever to a gaffer. So then you can really learn and understand lighting because the cameras are so good these days, to be honest, you can shoot on an iPhone. I mean, you know, they're, so, they're, they're amazing. So it's, it's really more about the lighting, I'd say, these days, more than anything. Lighting and colour grading, you can, that is the majority of cinematography that's now these days. Like, you don't have to rely on the cameras as much because they're so cheap and you can, there's such good dynamic range. You know, it's all about the grading and the lighting, I'd say. Um, people are often amazed by certain really crappy little cameras that have done such good shorts, mm -hmm. but just shows that it's like down to the, the cinematographer, not the camera. So yeah, you know, look out, look out at the lighting, you know, when you're on set and those things and, you, and you'll learn.